அவர் இப்போ தான் ஆடியோ கனெக்ட் ஆகி கொண்டிருக்குது இஸ் ஆல்மோஸ்ட் ஜாயின் எல்லாருக்கும் வணக்கம் இந்த தமிழ் ஊடக சந்திப்புக்கு இணைந்த அனைத்து தமிழ் ஊடகையாளருக்கும் அதோட எங்களோட இன்றைக்கு இணைந்திருக்கிற எம்பிபி லோகன் கணபதி அண்ணாக்கும் அமைச்சர் கல் கல்வி அமைச்சர் ஸ்டீவன் லட்சி அவர்களுக்கும் நான் இந்த நன்றியை தெரிவிச்சுக்கொள்றேன் ஸ்டீவன் மினிஸ்டர் ஸ்டீவன் லட்சி ஹஸ் பீன் ஃப்ரெண்ட் அண்ட் ஆலாய் அண்ட் அ பார்ட்னர் வித் தமிழ் கம்யூனிட்டி ஃபார் சச் அ லாங் டைம் சின்ஸ் ஹி வாஸ் ஸ்டாஃப் கம்யூனிகேஷன் Uh, a coordinator for uh, former prime minister stephen harper uh, even in the in the project of uh, boycotting the the common wealth in the colombo sri lanka he has been advocate for human rights and tamil genocide since that day even now as a minister and as a, a, a cabinet member part of this government he's been a great advocate for passing uh, bill 104 tamil genocide education week act and instrumental in, in the uh, securing fund for the tamil community center and uh, now he's also continuing to work to make sure that we have a, a, a good representation uh, in all sort of education so that's why we are having uh, minister steven lechey here we he want to talk about the reopening uh, plan for our students and how to protect students staff and teachers uh, before i turn it over to minister uh, steven lechey i would like to welcome um, Uh, MPP Logan Kanapathi and not to say a few words and then momentarily we'll go to Minister Steven Lechay. Uh, uh, thank Logan you. Ma- thank you Vijay. Thank you for that uh, kind introduction and thank you for Minister Steven Lechay joining us and uh, in the short notice and uh, really appreciate it. I want to I don't want to repeat what you Vijay says and Steven our uh, Minister Steven Lechay has been a champion in our Tamil community and he's been the heart of the not only in the in the election you've been the heart of the tamil community in the many phases and the many issues and uh, that's why uh, we are uh, success in ontario and uh, tamil people are appreciated what we are doing today is a focus about uh, school reopening and and i know is a student in ontario will resume in person learning they already started the the decision based on advice from expert including the the chief medical officers and the mental health development and well being of the children and our youth ஸோ எங்களுடைய எங்களுக்கு எங்களுடைய ஸ்ரீவான் லட்சியனுடைய இந்த இந்த வருக வந்து சில 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 ஐயங்களை நாங்கள் நீக்கிறது தான் முக்கியமான விடயம் உங்களோட தமிழ் மீடியாக்கள் இங்கே வந்திருக்கிறீங்க உங்களுடைய கேள்விகளை நீங்கள் கேட்கலாம் எங்களுக்கு காஃப் அன் அவர் தான் இருக்குது ஏனென்றால் ஒரு சோ நோட்டீஸில் அவர் இன்னொரு மீட்டிங் இருக்குது ஆனபடியால் நாங்கள் நிறைய நாங்கள் பில் பண்ணி இருக்கிற கன சக்சஸ்களை அந்த பில்டப் பண்ணின அதற்கான அந்த த்ரட் வந்து இந்த ஓமிக்ரோனால வந்திருக்குது அப்போ அதில் இருந்து நாங்கள் பிள்ளையால பிள்ளையால நாங்கள் இன்வெஸ்ட் பண்ணியிருக்கிறோம் ஸ்கூலில் நிறைய இன்வெஸ்ட் பண்ணியிருக்கிறோம் ஸ்கூல் போட்டுகளில் ஜென்ரலாக நிறைய இன்வெஸ்ட் பண்ணியிருக்கிறோம் அப்போ அந்த இன்வெஸ்ட்மெண்ட் வேலை பற்றி எல்லாம் ஸ்ரீமன் லட்சி அவர்களும் அவங்களுக்கு டீட்டெயிலான விளக்கத்தை தருவார் என்று கூறி விச் கரியோன் வித் with the program and i think sister will let you have a small window you have to go okay. to the 1230 meeting and thank you thank you for minister for joining us and enlighten the student uh, in ontario thank you thank you lokarana without further ado it's my distinguished honor to introduce minister steven lecher minister of education for the introductory remarks and then we'll go to the q and a minister uh well first off um I just want to uh acknowledge the incredible leadership of my colleagues of VJ of Logan of our entire team. We are a strong team while working hard fighting to ensure children return to class in the safest environments with every layer of protection. I also want to acknowledge um the strong leaders in the Tamil community, parents, students, educators standing together to get us through the worst of this pandemic I th- I thank you uh for all that you do 
uh, and I continue to be inspired by your community and the commitment you make to our country, to our security, and to our recovery. So thank you all. Um, I also want to just say our plan has been fully endorsed by Ontario's Chief Medical Officer of Health. It is supported by every medical officer of health in the province. It is supported by every pediatric hospital in the province. Sick kids, CHEO, all of them standing united to ensure children return to school on the 17th. Now, I know Mother Nature I put a curveball in those plans, but the kids are back and they're in schools with new layers of protection. I'm going to try to quickly get through them. The first is major investment in air ventilation. Uh, for VJ in Scarborough, for Logan and Markham Thornhill, for myself and Vaughn, and for all of us across Ontario, we have already announced massive investments in local schools. Every one of our schools, 4,800 publicly funded schools, have better improved ventilation using the highest quality the filters, MERV 13s, fil changing them more often, inspecting all of them, and uh, running our air systems two hours before and after to optimize airflow. We have 70,000 HEPA units in every one of our classrooms, VJ Slogan, myself, every kindergarten classroom has HEPA filters in every school that does not have mechanical ventilation. We've set the standard. You will have HEPA filters in your classrooms. We have 70,000, 3,000 more being provided to our schools, 5,000 for our child care centers. It is leadership under our premier because we know how critical it is to keep the air quality strong. We didn't do this during Omicron. We didn't scramble to get more HEPA units when Omicron came. We have been on this since the summer when we put them all in place for September. The second component is high quality masks, three ply masks for students and N95s for staff. The only province in Canada to offer N95s for our education staff and all of our childcare staff as well. We want them to be safe. Uh, uh, the other element that I think is really important is we have enhanced the screening. We've made it more stricter, more sensitive more HEPA units to reduce the risk of a child we have had during a school in the first place. So uh, the screening have been enhanced uh, and there's now daily on-site screening. So when your child enters a school, there's a principal, an administrator asking the questions, do you have symptoms? Do you, do you live with anyone with symptoms? To take every risk out of the school before they walk into the school. The other element that's important is we have given one of three provinces in Canada accelerated access to boosters for our education staff. For, we want them to be immunized, get the booster. That's why we've given them preferential access, what's making a difference. Uh, we're one of the first and one of only three to do that. And we are one of the only provinces joining Newfoundland in launching school-based vaccination clinics. These are specific clinics built out uh, in the schools with parental consent, to be clear, parents must sign and consent, but we make it easier for you. We reduce the barriers. Maybe for some working people, for single parents, they may not have the time. It may be difficult to get to a, a clinic. We're going to do it right in schools across Ontario with consent. That's going to help us increase our immunization rates. Remember, under our province and leader, pr pr Premier's leadership, we have one of the highest vaccine rates for high schools in Canada. 82 and a half, almost 83% are double vaccinated, which is amazing for 12 to 17 year olds. It's the five to 11 year olds that were at 50% single dose. Now, those kids only got access to the vaccine later. It was only approved for young kids later on. So we've done well, 50%, but we want to see that number come right up. So we're going to keep pushing it. Look at Newfoundland, they have 70% first dose. So we want to use that as a template. And what they did is in school clinics, we're going to do that as well. Anything we can do to increase immunization, make it easier. And also for parents who may be still hesitant, still thinking, should I do it for my child? You know, it's not about my opinion. It's, you know, it's about your opinion working with your pediatrician, but please contact sick kids. They've created a hotline five days a week. It's run by medical leaders, nurses, doctors who are available to speak to you confidentially about the effectiveness of this vaccine so that you could have the confidence to get your child immunized. The other thing is we have enhance the cleaning within our schools, more funding for cleaning of all the high contact places, which is very important. That's better. Um, we have, and are going to continue to make this a priority, but um, I think with that, I'll pause to simply acknowledge that the plan is strong. We are one of the only provinces to have delivered 3.9 million rapid tests to schools. I have had countless conversations with VJ, with Logan, 
with colleagues in the Minister of Health, with Christine Elliott, all of us have been saying we need the federal government to send us rapid tests. Now that we finally are starting to get them, where are they going? Prioritize for schools, for hospitals, for long-term care, for what matters most to us, for people who have families, grandparents, and children, we're making them the priority. 3.9 million are already in our schools. They're going to go to elementary students and staff and then get to the high school students as well. All of them will get kits of two tests. They're for symptomatic purposes. We'll be one of the only provinces doing this so that when your child has a symptom, you don't know. It could be, it look like a cold, but you want to know if they have COVID or not. You're going to be able to test them twice over a 24-hour period of time. And that will give you the confidence that there are two negative tests, their symptoms subside. You can send them back to school safely. Our plan is about reducing risk. It's about strengthening the layers of protection. It's about keeping kids in school, which we believe, I believe so strongly. And I know VJ Logan and I share this opinion that kids need to be in school. Their mental health matters. Their physical health matters. Their academic success matters. And we care deeply about them. So we're going to continue to make this a, a priority. I'm also proud that we are investing in better school ventilation. We've put major investments in Scarborough, in Markham, in Thornhill, in Vaughan, in Etobicoke, in every region of this province, because we have one mission, which is reduce risk, protect kids, and keep kids in school. So with that, I'll turn it back to you, Vijay, and thank you again uh, for your leadership, for Logan's leadership, uh, for all that you do uh, to support families and children in Ontario. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Minister, for that comprehensive uh, measures <clears throat> and uh, proactive measures, not just during Omicron, starting last summer. I think that's uh, very important. Now I will uh, um, open the floor for uh, our media personnel to ask uh, questions uh, directly to the minister if they have it now. And um, we also have some pre-submitted questions, but first I will open the floor and please uh, raise your hand by the raise hand button feature, or just uh, through the fiscal way, uh, I will uh, we'll go from there. I think um, um, uh, Charles Devasayaham from Tamil Mirror. Uh, Charles Anna, please unmute yourself. Go ahead. You had unmute. Can you hear me now? Yes. Oh, hi. Hi, Minister. Uh, yes, sir. I have watched your statements and TV interviews uh, all the time, and um, you're very young and hardworking, and above all, very articulate. <laughs> I, I was really impressed with uh, what you're doing. My question is, uh, experts are saying that uh, we haven't reached the peak of Omicron yet. Ontario will be in a modified stage for another two weeks, uh, or, or stage for another one week. So in this um, situation, why would you like to open it sooner than later? Well, thank you so much for the question and for your kindness, Charles. Uh, I, uh, I do appreciate it, and I know we all do. Um, first off, uh, the government has made a commitment that the first to reopen in our sort of schools. In 2022, the first thing that's reopening are children going back to school. We have delayed the reopening of our economy it was supposed to open, as you know, on the 25th. It's now being pushed to no earlier than the 31st of January because, to your point, we want to be cautious. We want to protect the kids. We want to reduce the risk. When they open, they're opening at a lower percentage. It's starting at, as I recall, 50%, um, which, again, will reduce any level of transmission and create more distance within these settings. And then 21 days later, according to the best public health advice, uh, the government could decide then if we're going to go from 50% to a higher percentage of occupancy, you know, 75, 100%, et cetera. We'll make that decision based on data. What is going to guide us is protecting our children, our patients in hospitals, and our seniors in long-term care. We're not going to compromise what matters. That's why we've added more time to reopen. It's why we've provided, we're not going from zero to 100 overnight. We're going to take another week after saying it was going to be the 25th, we're going to take a bit more time. We're going to reduce the percentages and we're going to watch the data because 21 days later, I assure you, if we're not on the right track, the premier will do what he's always done, which is the right thing. It may not be the easy thing. It may not be the popular thing in the moment. 
we will do what we must to protect families and the most risk, high risk within our communities. You know, I speak to Logan, who often speaks to about his, his wife, a uh, physician on the front lines. It is for people like them that are sacrificing every single day that we owe it to them to be cautious. And I think the plan we've unveiled achieves that to protect our frontline staff while also protecting the children, the, uh, uh, the patients and the seniors like my own grandmother, who's, you know, uh, at a long-term care in York region, uh, 97 years old. So we all have skin in the game. We all want them to be safe. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Minister. Thanks, uh, Charles Anna. Uh, we have, uh, next we have uh, Raj Anna from EETV. Raj Anna, please unmute yourself and go ahead. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for everybody. Uh, thank you for the uh, Minister uh, Stephen Lim, uh, Chair for thank the you. nation. Uh, our community is uh, helpful this information. I have one question. Like uh, you, can, you tell me, like uh, soon started uh, in the schools, every children have uh, uh, more hours in the put in the mask. That one is a coming, uh, you know, effect for carbon dioxide in uh, some of the uh, continuous, uh, maybe six, eight hours they put it there. That's one you can find any uh, side effect. Uh, you can uh, um, save any uh, idea for it, please. Otherwise, it is very good. And then, uh, yeah, our community is uh, like a, uh, they need for a children's uh, uh, safe and then the children's education also. Uh, thank you for sharing. Uh, thank yeah, thank you. I think the important element there is the air ventilation, how we can reduce the risk within these uh, settings, schools and child care, is make the air quality as best as possible, which is why we started in September. You know, Raj, we did not wait. Every province today is scrambling to buy MERV 13 filters, the best filters you could put in the HVAC system. They're scrambling globally to try to find uh, HEPA units that are available on the market. We had the foresight to think ahead. We got ahead of the virus. This is during Delta, not even Omicron. We did this in September. Also, we had the foresight to send 11 million rapid tests home for families over the holidays. Remember, the only province to do that. Again, why would we do it? Because we wanted to give parents a tool to reduce risk in their household and of course, for their kids when they get back to class. So I appreciate so much the question because it speaks to the importance of ventilation. And so 70,000 HEPA units are in classrooms. Every school that does not have a mechanical ventilation system now has a standard of HEPA units in every school classroom, not just the classrooms though, in the libraries, in the cafeterias, in the tech, in the tech rooms, every single space has a HEPA unit within schools that don't have HVAC systems. For the schools that do have HVAC, which is more than two thirds in Ontario, they've all been inspected and improved. We've optimized them, $600 million of investment. In fact, in I know this because in Toronto public and Catholic school boards, in the York public and Catholic school boards for Logan and I, we have put in literally hundreds of millions of dollars to improve the air ventilation standards last sense. summer. So we got ahead of it. We're working towards doing more, 3,000 more HEPA units, all designed to your point to reduce those risks because children are going to be together, you know, for several hours, uh, several hours a day. We're also giving the best quality PPE, which is important because the public health advice is saying, look, wear high quality masks. The only province for N95s for our staff, that's also childcare too and education and giving a high quality mask to the kids. And I just want to assure families, we are doing more than any province in this country. We are getting well ahead of public. In fact, we don't just rely on public health advice to do that. We've gone ahead of it. We go above it. And that's because for all of us, we just care deeply about children and we want to keep them as safe as possible through these enhanced layers of protection and through these additional investments, uh, like, for example, $300 million more million for our school boards to hire more staff, 2,000 more staff more custodians because part of keeping this virus away from us is to also make sure that the schools are clean. So we've enhanced the cleaning in a big way, we've hired more, hundreds more. We're going to continue to make that a focus to protect our schools. Thank you for your information. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. Thank you, Rajana. Yeah. Uh, Thank you, uh, Minister. 
Begin, can I go? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Thank you, Minister, for being with us today with the uh, Tamil media. Um, uh, not only we as uh, Tamil media, also the Tamil parents have many questions, you know. But uh, whatever you said today are the answers for that. You know, we all learned from you and Vijay and Logan. Uh, so my, my only question is, uh, you mentioned about the screening. Uh, you are... You are you are highly giving a priority for the screening, I think. Uh, so uh, that is, you said, to in order to reduce the risk. So can you please elaborate the the, the method or the system, the screening system, the schools you are going to introduce? Uh, well, first off, Logan, it is wonderful to see you, sir. You are the second most important Logan in my life. I just want you to know that, okay? And don't be offended, you're not number one, but you know who number one is, okay? But uh, uh, what I will say to you, sir, is the program we've unveiled for families is designed to build their confidence because it's not a politician saying that this, this plan is strong. It's the, it's, it's the best hospitals in Canada that care for our children. It is Sick Kids, the CEO, who said this plan is strong. It is the head of the Ontario Science Table, Dr. Juni who said he's excited to send his kids back in a public school in Toronto, downtown, and that we have the strongest plan in Canada. In fact, one of the strongest plans on the continent because we've invested in the science, we've invested in ventilation, we've elevated better masks for kids, N95s for staff, and we're delivering millions of rapid tests every single week. You know, most provinces are making other things priorities. We've made schools and childcare settings a priority. We finally have these rapid tests from the federal liberal government. It's taken a long time to get them too long, but we now have more coming in and we are going to continue to send them to schools. 3.9 million this week, another 1.2 million next week, just for context, to underscore to you that we are uh, energized to do whatever the heck it takes, everything, whatever it takes to protect families, protect communities and protect the schools and keep them open because we know it's important for their mental health. So all of these layers of protection are supported by science by the chief medical officer of health. Dr. Moore has said this plan is one of the strongest he has seen literally available. Uh, you know, there are, there are countries like the United Kingdom that are not even requiring masking in schools. Um, they didn't put any money in ventilation. There are problems in this country that didn't buy any HEPA units that still haven't. There are problems that are not going to send rapid tests, at least yet. We are ahead of this. And I appreciate that this virus changes daily. I appreciate that the impacts for people are significant. This has not been easy for staff, for the families, for the kids, but we have to continue to work together to ensure children go to school. That's why the government is leading by investing and delivering PPE, rapid test, HEPA units, literally every single week we're doing more because for us, it is a moral imperative for the benefit of children that they return to school. And I will argue that all provinces are returning their kids to school, either they have returned them with the exception of Quebec, that is in a very, you know, very sad uh, situation. So uh, our focus will continue to be safety. It'll continue to be enhancing our layers of protection. And if we're encouraged to do anything more, I think you know we will act upon it immediately uh, to reduce the risk. That's really important. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. 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 Thank you back to school right now, what are the learning options for their children? Well, it's a great question. Thank you so much for it. Uh, children and, and parents in the on province can work with their school board to return to online learning, if that's their preference. Uh, school boards are working hard to accommodate them. Uh, and obviously, we're proud in Ontario to have been the only province two years ago to have built an online learning system. Uh, the unions opposed it. The liberals and NDP said, no, this is the worst idea ever. We said, look, well, we obviously want kids to be in school. But if, God forbid, pandemic hit, snow days hit, we should have the ability to keep these kids learning, that the teachers should continue to be 
in front of their kids, even if it's like this on a, on a computer, it's still better than staying home alone Absolutely. without any support, any teacher support. So we built up the infrastructure. We provided 300,000 tablets and iPads to kids that maybe their families needed. We provided uh, training to the staff to make sure they're better at live learning like this. It's dynamic, it's live, it's engaging. And it's better than the alternative, which is what the liberals would have done, which is sent kids home permanently with no support. I am sorry, I don't agree with that. And if we're going to pay our educators, I want them to do the best they can by keeping the kids learning uh, online. And while clearly for VJ, for Logan, for I, we want the kids in school, of course, I mean, without a doubt, if, if God forbid, a pandemic hits, which we know it can hit, snow days hit because we know those happen too in this country uh you know uh, God, just recently then we have the ability to keep the kids learning online by pivoting literally within 24 hours and that's a strength and we'll continue to offer that choice for families thank you so much sir. thank you thank you yeah for sure thank you minister thank you uh, um i think it's already 12 33 is there any question the last question Vijay. from the floor Vanakam, Vijay. Oh, Vanakam Kanavid Ravindarana, let's go it to you for the last question and then we'll wrap it up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ilarm Mahachi or a school of opponent, Tower, Sriana Sanders and Magam School of Pora, other Kalvi Amajaka, Nodi Olaman, the Nanti Tiri to Boran, and a short time under Badia, and Itura and Odia Kalti Lenga Sigaret, and in the Alex, Jomani Sarva, Karandola, Alex Makum or Nandu, whatever. Nandri, Nandri Kanami, Ravindrana, Minister. Um, uh, Mr. Kanabadi Ravindran from uh, Yugam Radio and Yugam TV, um, he he wants to give a good comment uh, to you and Premier Ford for the continuous uh, work, um, especially uh, Premier came out and helped uh, his neighbours throughout the uh, uh, difficult time during the storm, as well as um, he wants to convey the message to you. Kids are very happy to go back to school and he said thanks to you for your uh, uh, leadership. And also, um, we just want to thank uh, everyone for joining today. So thank you, Kanabade uh, Ravindranna. Uh, before thank I you. turn it over to, thank you, Minister. Before I turn it over to Minister Lache for his final uh, words, I just want to um, acknowledge all the media that are, are presented here today. In the in the Tamil Udaga Sandipuke Vandarakum, Anete Tamil media, Saranda, Ontario uh, government I want to recognize all the media that are here today. Kanabadi uh, Ravindran from Yugam Radio, Kamal Navaratnam from Ulaga Tamilar, Raj Anna from EETV, Mohundan Murali from Ula Murasu, um, Charles uh, Charles Deva from Devasayam from Tamil Mirror. Krishna Linga Manna from Krishna Live Telecast, Muka Tamil from Parai, Sudaharan from Good Evening Canada, Logan Logendra Lingam from Uday News. Um, thank you to all the Tamil media outlets for joining. Um, so, just for our final remarks, um, I will turn it over to Minister Lecce for his final words and then we'll wrap it up. Well, I just want to say Nandri to all of you for your work and your leadership in the community. Thank you so much. Uh, happy Taipangal. I want to thank you for what you do as we celebrate your contributions and everything that the Tamil community represents in Canada. Uh, good people, family people, hard workers, proud Canadians, and some of my friends uh, and my neighbors are people who have been benefited, enriched by your work, your sacrifice. So thank you for all that you do for your families. And I want to thank the first Tamils ever elected in the provincial legislature in Ontario history. Uh, my brothers, one is younger, one is older, uh, Vijay and Logan, uh, who continue to be wonderful friends, amazing public servants, uh, and, and fighters for families in the next generation. So thank you all for what you do. Thank you, Vijay, for bringing us together. Thank you, Logan, for your continued leadership. 
and I wish you well. Stay safe, everyone. I know we've got a couple more difficult weeks. I am absolutely confident we're going to get through this and we will be able to truly embrace, um, you know, uh, the light at the end of the tunnel. So please stay thank vigilant you. and stay safe. So thank you all. Thank, thank you, Minister. Can I okay, so share much. something, uh, Vijay? Can I share thank something you. before yeah, Minister yeah, leaves? Yeah. 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 Yeah, thank you, Minister. Um, I just want to share a good news uh, for you all. Uh, we as a media is uh, like a family today. So we don't uh, even though you three of you uh, here on behalf of the government, but we are like a family here. So I, uh, for recent days, uh, we talk to, we meet many people and uh, many of the parents and the friends, they, what they are views and is, uh, uh, most of them, they want to bring your government back uh, for the next uh, period, Selection. you know. Uh, yeah. So yeah. that is a good news, uh, but uh, even it is a government, uh, it's a different uh, meeting, but I, I, don't, I don't think I will have uh, another opportunity to, to share this uh, news. So that's why I brought this uh, to you and thank you. Good luck. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I know we will see each other soon, all of us. Uh, so... Stay well. Thank you again. Thank you. 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 Thank you